Hey there. In this video, we are looking at transformations of sine and cosine functions, or in other words, using the concepts of expansions, compressions, translations, and reflections to make connections between the graphs and the equations that represent those functions. All right, so we're going to create graphs for sine and cosine functions that have multiple transformations applied to them. So this base function here, y equals sine x, if we change it to y equals a sine b x plus c plus d. So we may have some or all of those things that have been done to this. So hopefully you've seen some of my previous videos where we address each of those changes individually, as in we look at amplitude change, when we change that value of a, which is also a possible reflection if it's negative, and we look at changing the value of b, so that causes a period change, a horizontal compression or expansion, and we look at changing this value of c here, which is a horizontal shift or phase shift, and changing this value of d on the end outside the function, which is a vertical shift or vertical displacement. And so we're going to look at taking an equation, creating a graph, not with Desmos here like this, but just using our interpretation of the equation and creating a hand-drawn graph. Let's do that right now. All right, so we'll graph a few different functions here with a number of transformations. This first one, a cosine function here. And there's actually one thing we should notice here. A lot of it is our standard form. We expect this A value out here, this D value on the end. We even have two things in here. But the thing to notice is this 2 is inside the brackets here, which is not the standard form. So we're actually going to have to change the equation a little bit before we create the graph. In other words, what we're going to have to do is factor out this 2 because the standard form is that 2 is outside of these brackets and we'll have uh, the phase shift inside there as usual. So if you factor the 2 out, of course there's an x there. The thing is if you factor a 2 out of this, basically you have to divide this by 2 because then when it's factored out it has to multiply by that to give us the x plus pi over 3 here. What actually needs to be in there is plus pi over 6. And maybe that's pretty tiny, so I'm going to write it again over here. We're going to have it as y equals 5 cos 2 x plus pi over 6 minus 1. Because if we wanted to put it back into this non-standard form, if we multiply the 2 by the x, we would get our 2x. And if we multiply the 2 by the pi over 6, 2 pi over 6 is pi over 3. So you have to make that change that it needs to be in the standard form before we're going to graph it here. So we can look at what we have here. We have an amplitude of 5. This a value is 5. And we have a vertical displacement of minus 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to set ourselves up with some horizontal lines to kind of guide us to draw this function. So the first thing I'm going to do is this minus 1 here. So I'm going to draw a kind of a little dotted line across at minus 1. That's going to be our center line for our function. And then with our amplitude of 5, we need to go up and down 5 from there. So if I go up 5 from there, I'm at 4. Draw a dotted line across. And if I go down 5 from there, I'm at minus 6. So we're going to use that to guide us as we draw this function. Now the next thing to notice in our function is that our phase shift here is plus pi over 6, meaning it's pi over 6 to the left. So this is pi. Well, it's negative pi, but it's six spaces. So pi over 6 is one space. So this is where we're looking at our phase shift. The entire graph is going to be shifted this way by one space there. So I'm going to draw a vertical line here just because I'm going to imagine that that's our starting point for our cosine function. All right, so it is a cosine function. So at that point, at this point right here, it's going to be at the top at a maximum point. So we know it's going to start there. Now the last thing that we need to look at here is the 2. So the fact that there's a 2 there, the b value is 2, which means the period is 2 pi over 2 or pi. The period being pi, we need to plan that out on here. So pi is, again, 6 squares on here. So then we're going to be at a, another maximum again. If it's at a maximum here, then when we go pi later, we're going to be at a maximum again. And then that's just going to keep happening. Right? Maximum again right here, and maximum again right there. 
and we can even go back one if we have enough squares. I think I'm maybe one off, but kind of there. So those are all our maximum points where it's going to be at the top. Halfway in between those points, it's going to be at the bottom of a cycle, which is all the way down at negative six. So halfway in between here, we're going to be down there. And then we can put those other ones halfway in between there and here. And then over on the other side here, halfway between there, we're down in the bottom. Now to help get this a half decent shape, in between each of each of these, like in between these two here, the top and the bottom point, it should be at the middle, right? If it's at the top at one and at the bottom at the other, it should be in the middle. So halfway between this space right here, I'm going to put a a point in the middle, except I missed there. It's got to be not in the not on the x-axis, but in on my center line, which is right here. All right, and then we can kind of continue that pattern along here, right? So there's a high and a low point, so half in between right there, and we keep going with that. All the way across, and we can even do one over there, and then on this other side here, put those points. And then we can try and draw a curve in here to fit that. So do the best I can to make it kind of rounded when you're drawing this thing we're just using kind of our best estimation is what the curves looks like if you're drawing the thing you should realize it it's not it's not saw teeth it's not sharp points like that but it's also not semicircles it's not like this it's not it's not vertical in the middle. It's it's at an angle in the middle. And it's a bit rounded off. It's kind of somewhere in between those two things. All right? So that is that function, 5 cos 2x plus pi over 3 minus 1. We're going to do one more right now. So we have here another, this is a sine function, another trig function with quite a few transformations. I think I threw almost everything in there. <laughs> we have... Uh, we have a negative here, so we're going to have a vertical reflection. That is a vertical reflection that we'll have to take care of later. We have amplitude of 20. We have a B value that involves pi here, so it's going to mean our period doesn't involve pi, which is why the scale here doesn't involve pi, because this function is going to be set up that way. And then we have a phase shift. This is in sort of the standard form where the B value is already factored out outside those brackets. So our phase shift is six to the right, and then we have a vertical displacement of four up. So I think it's a good idea to deal with the vertical stuff first. So we're gonna deal with the 20 and the four. So the four, we are gonna be vertically shifted four up. So the scale 10 is five squares. So four is two squares. So there's our four across there, roughly speaking. I don't know if I'm hitting the line exactly, but it's close enough. And then we want to go 20 up and down from there. So 20 up from there is going to be 24, which is right there. So we'll put a, a line across for a maximum to help guide us. And then we'll put a line 20 down from there. So it's going to be minus 16, which would be right there. So we'll draw a line across there. And then we'll plan out the rest of it here. I'm going to deal with the phase shift next. It's six to the right, so we want to go right to there. I think it's a good idea to draw a vertical line there just to help us realize that that's kind of where we're thinking of the starting point. Now, before we start marking off the period, we want to get a kind of an initial point here. This is a sine curve, so sine starts on the center line, but it's actually a negative sine curve. So if we think about this, our, our base function as minus sine x, then instead of starting in the middle on the way up like a positive sine curve would, it's going to be starting in the middle on the way down. So when we, when we draw this out, we're going to have to remember that to deal with that vertical reflection. So I'm going to put a point there, and then we can look at our period here. The fact that the period, that the b value is pi over 10, b value is pi over 10, now you might just think, oh, that number under there is the period, but it's only that way if the top number is 2 pi, right? If the b value is 2 pi over something, then the something on the bottom is the period. So pi over 10 is the same as 2 pi over 20. So the, the period of this is actually 20. 
if you if you weren't sure about that, if you if you're not sure uh, equating that like that, what you what you could do is you could just say, okay, well I know that I can get the period by taking two pi and dividing by the b value, and so if you go two pi divided by pi over ten, and you then flip it over, divide by this fraction here, and you turn it into two pi times 10 over pi, right? Dividing by pi over 10 is like multiplying by 10 over pi. If I then cancel out my pi, I have two times 10, which is 20, which is what the period is. So either way, you come up with the fact that the period is 20. So if this is our starting point here, we're gonna mark off 20 from here. So if it's at six, it's gonna be at 26, which is right to there. It's gonna be in the middle again there. And it's a sine curve, so halfway in between those two, that's 16 here, it's going to be in the middle. And then, don't forget, there's a vertical reflection, so the, the middle two normally sine would be up at the top, and you'd put it there, but it's been vertically reflected, so it's going to be down on the bottom instead. At halfway in between those two, it's going to be right there. And then the other side, it's going to be up at the top, so halfway in between these two, which is 21. It's going to be at the top, and then we can kind of just do the same thing here. Put it all together there, and we have those points, and then we can continue it the other way as well, up at the top there, and down in the middle right there. And we're kind of off at the other end, so that's probably good enough. And then we're going to draw a, a curve through that whole thing as best we can here. And we're just kind of giving a rough indication of where it is. It's it's not ideal. If you wanted to, you could plot a few other points to try and make it completely accurate. But we're just giving a rough sketch of what happens to that graph. All right. So that is drawing graphs of sine and cosine functions that have multiple transformations.